and welcome to Quarantine Art Chat. Uh, Rochelle Dusting is a fine artist here in Perth. I first saw Rochelle's work um, on an exhibition poster in South Perth and was touched by the capture of her warmth of expression in her work. Rochelle is one of the most beautiful and generous hearted people I know and a positive force for good in the arts community in Australia. So thank you for joining us, Rochelle. Oh, thank you so much for having me. Wow, that, that's just, I'm such a words person and that just makes my heart so, so light. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> um, well, firstly, I wanted to ask you, how are you and your family coping? Are you all safe and well? How are you doing? Yeah, we, we are safe and well. Um, my, uh, my brother and sister, sister-in-law actually just moved back, um, got the tick of approval from, um, granted to move back because they were scheduled to be back in Perth this month. And so, um, so they're well, they're in quarantine right now, but, um, but yeah, my family are good and I'm healthy and safe and yeah, yeah. But it's, yeah, what a strange time, huh? Very strange times, very strange times, yeah. But we, we've been very fortunate we haven't had it nearly as bad as like America or, or Europe or anything like that. Mm, so yeah. for us, we can move on with a relative normality a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think in Perth being, being quite isolated, there is a benefit to that right now. Yeah. And, and the, the amount of space that we have, it's definitely... Um, yeah, being a benefit. Yeah. <laughs> um, so for those who might not be acquainted with your work, um, can you just run down on your arts practice? What do you do? What's your, your values and your goals? In your yeah, cool. Um, so my main um, style of work at the moment is realistic. Um, it's, it's realism. So I paint realistically, um, mainly uh, people, so figuration and portraiture. Um, and yeah, I, I really developed um, a keen interest to portraiture quite early on before um, I really identified as um, an artist. I, I really loved doing portrait drawing in school and, and all of my projects basically had some face in it. <laughs> if I could weave it in, then I would. Um, and, and yeah, that's been, I guess, a curiosity of mine um, since, yeah, since being quite young and being able to, um, to draw. So I, I can't, I haven't really managed to, to go too far away from that, um, other than the occasional um, sketch of eucalyptus leaves, which I also really love, um, <laughs> doodling. But, um, but yeah, my main style of, pra uh, of practice is, is portraiture, realism, figure, figure painting, um, and in oil paints as well, specifically um, uh, in oil paints and and also drawing, but mainly mainly oils. Yeah, yeah. And you do some workshops as well, don't you? Yeah, I love to teach, so I kind of um, balance my art practice. Um, try and balance it fifty fifty with uh, with teaching and um, basically whatever I'm doing in the studio. I try to um, yeah impart that. Um, that knowledge to whoever wants to learn really um, I have I have a lot of private students that I see throughout the week um, some of them are um, actually the youngest student I have at the moment I think she's in grade eight now um, so I've, I've tutored her since she was about 11 um, and she's incredible but um, but yeah any from any age from um, yeah, mid mid high school to um, to mature age, I have a few ladies that, that come to me during the week as well. So, um, yeah, I just love being able to share those discoveries that I'm experiencing myself in, in my art practice, and and also yeah, running workshops, which is um, uh, something that I really enjoy doing as well, um, independently, and then also through high schools and and different kind of arts organisations and such. So. Yeah, it keeps it it keeps it interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think it's lovely. I love how um, you're such a people orientated person. Like it's not just restricted to your canvas. It's like I can see your love for people comes out in your whole art practice. That's so lovely. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah, I think I think there's something really beautiful about like sharing sharing our stories, and I think that's something that I always try and communicate in my paintings and in my works, but if I'm not also doing that outside of my, my practice, 
my art practice, then um, it's almost like redundant, you know. <laughs> but I think they just they feed and flow into each other. Um, it's yeah. it's all centers and anchors on um, the human story, and 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 I love hearing people's stories and listening to other people's journeys, and and having that tie into my work as well as teaching. Yeah. Um, yeah. So when the quarantine period hit in March then, how did that really affect your practice? Yeah, it's been, it's been a really, um, yeah, I guess most people would describe it as a strange time. But I think, yeah, I, I really tried to pivot quite early. I think um, I remember having a conversation with a friend of mine who um, had just moved to Sydney um, and it was about a week before um, COVID was really like announced and all the restrictions came into play. And um, he, it was on a Friday and he called and he was like, oh, so show how have you been impacted? And at that point, because there had been really no full effect in, in at least Perth, mm -hmm. um, I was like, oh, well, it's not, it's not really like changed anything for me right now. Um, and between Friday to the following Tuesday, um, I had, yeah, about six events cancelled, um, six big workshops all, all, all gone. Um, and in anticipating from that conversation over that weekend, I thought, oh, wow, well, if this is going to take effect, then what am I going to do? And so it was a very small window, actually, that I started to kind of think like, okay, I need to anticipate this hap this happening and it, and if um, you know events and, and gigs are going to be cancelled, so I got in touch with the girl who designed my website, and I was like, "How quickly can we produce a new page on my website to create online consults <laughs> um, and online um, tuition and and consults is something that I was thinking a lot about last year um, in this event that I ran called The Artist Path, which you came to, to which is awesome. Um, and so that event was really centred around um, helping uh, emerging artists and emerging creatives on the journey towards becoming an artist and what that looks like and, and practically what it looks like as well. And so in, in running that event last year, I had a lot of engagement with people from interstate um, and because of that, I had this idea of, oh, I want to create this kind of online tuition so that I can be able to have those more professional conversations um, and stream of income through mm -hmm. people who are not just in Perth, but wanting the same information outside of Perth. So it was already a, an idea that I had on the back burner, but with COVID, it was like, okay, I need to do this now. <laughs> <laughs> so I kind of brought it to the forefront and then thankfully um, Emma was able to produce this other aspect to the website, um, which I was able to then release, um, I think, within the first two weeks of um, isolation. So so it happened really quickly. I was just saying it and thinking, nah, she's onto it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and yeah, so that happened really quickly. And then I think within the first month of COVID, um, I had, yeah, uh, students who I had seen in Perth who could no longer make it in person mm -hmm. uh, book in book in online and also um, people from um, Adelaide and uh, yeah further in Sydney yeah so it was good now I'm like I realized the challenges though <laughs> of doing things online and so um, I've tried to not push that as much um, because I do really enjoy more the face-to-face -face. but also I think practically um, it's actually really hard to teach anything um, anything online you know <laughs> I've got a, I've got a friend who's a maths teacher in, uh, in Melbourne and the mm -hmm. school has a policy of only 10 minutes per class so they can actually FaceTime only or Zoom or whatever only like 10 minutes per class so you actually only get 10 minutes of tuition and then everything um, else has to be like this chat like email and everyone needs to sort of click in at their attendance, but he actually has no idea who's actually there or whether they're learning anything. And he says, so frustrating, so difficult. Yeah, it's, re it's a tough gig. I, um, 
I was talking to a student um, who I'd had a couple times in the studio, so I was already aware of what she was working on. And she emailed me and uh, like an SOS email was really stuck in the studio. And so we, we had a session and, and it was the most challenging uh, thing for me to try and articulate what it was that she was needing to correct and how to correct a particular area of her painting. Um, it really, really pushed me to to teach better <laughs> and to have because you don't realize how much um, you rely on doing rather than just speaking and and the power that your words have in trying to yeah articulate things correctly and explain things um and make sense because <laughs> normally i'm kind of talking as i'm as i'm doing and fixing things but without yeah. the actual physical fixing part um just Very trying to do that with words it, you can only get so far so it, yeah i props to all of those people right now like who are using online platforms to teach because it's yeah it's a hard gig <laughs> yeah 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 mm. it's very very different it's not the same and I, I find even just trying to communicate with people because I'm not a words person by any means I'm no good with words I'm not good at understanding words I'm not good at giving out good words I'm not a words person um, I'm all about visual. I'm all about body language and just intuition. And I need the person right there next to me to be able to sort of guess what they're feeling. And how, but but I need them there. I need them physically there. It's so different over Zoom or over yeah online platforms like you say. I just can't. I feel so stunted socially. I can't pick up. Yeah, yeah. What, I can't read people the same way. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. yeah. Like I was saying before, we haven't been significantly affected here in Perth, like in Europe or America. Um, even over over east, that's still got a you know sort of a sense of lockdown over there as well. Um, but do you think on like a, a larger scale, like a global scale, do you see the arts community sort of evolving due to this pandemic? You know, what's interesting is that I'm I'm part of this online Australian gallery called Blue Thumb, and which a lot of artists in Australia put up their work um, through this, this online gallery. And I'm part of their Facebook group um, and people constantly asking questions and posting, you know, interacting with, with other artists. And, and no joke, nearly every day over the last month, someone has posted about their work, you know, one work, two work, three work selling. And it's so encouraging to know that even though there is a lot of negative things that are happening in the world because of COVID. And, you know, we're so inundated on social media with like bombarded by the media <laughs> with all of the negative, but it's so refreshing to have those, to read those posts on the daily, mm. um, knowing that people are still buying art and, and the, even yeah, even though there are a lot of businesses that are closing and are being devastated by the impact, it's it's still like there's a, there's some light there, <laughs> knowing that um, the the few who are who are actually okay, yeah. who would normally be like the patrons or like the the artists' audience, um, those guys are, who are stuck at home, they're wanting to redecorate and they're wanting you know new <laughs> things on their walls. So so it's actually. Yeah, it's not all doom and gloom, which has been really refreshing. And I think trying to look for the gold and like look for those moments as well. Um, you have to be deliberate in doing that too. Yes. Um, but yeah, that's been something positive, I think, that I've noticed um, and been really encouraged by. Yeah. So, yeah. It's funny you say that because I think I've actually bought more art in the last eight weeks than I have in my whole life. Um, me too. I, I bought a, I bought a drawing off of, um, off of a Perth artist a few weeks ago and yeah, I, I, so I'm in that group too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think everyone, I was, I was saying to someone else, cause I, I'm not great in the kitchen. I don't like being in the kitchen at all. It's a far and scary place to me, but I'm a wife <laughs> and I have a very traditional husband. And so I try very hard to be 
I cook something anyway. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but sort of since this has happened, I've tried to sort of buy more time to be a little bit better at cooking, a little bit better at baking, and then we're doing a little bit more renovating. So I think we're all going to come out of this like nicer homes and better cooks and <laughs> and like and valuing things that are are important. I think a lot of people now are, are like there's this. Um, global like stripping away of just the excess and and actually putting intention into like what matters and what we really do value and you know people who are now separated from their families are realizing that family is is something to value and you know yeah what hangs on your wall like (laughs) also (laughs) something that you know is to be valued and Yeah. yeah it's I think that's that's something that I've definitely noticed. Like there's been a, this global awareness to that. For yeah. Sure. My husband was saying something similar recently that like I think he's, because he's having to work from home, um, he suddenly realised that home isn't just something that's going to look nice, but he's actually going to feel at home. Like he's got to really love it. And mm. it's really interesting, all these little values that people are coming up with. Like some people I know, two months ago or three months ago could not imagine trying to work from home with their kids Mm. around like I don't think it would have been on their list of wanting to do in life but now that they're actually doing it and they have their kids home and and mum's there you know homeschooling the kids and dad's at home doing his work suddenly their whole world has changed and they've just noticed how beautiful it is and Mm. how valuable it is and I think obviously with with um, negative of what's going around it's heightened our appreciation for what we do value and you know, really hold close with people we love so I think that's really nice and important we don't let go of that going forward yeah yeah absolutely I think a lot of artists have the luxury of being you know having a lot of alone time and being isolated regardless of what's going on outside of their studio context because for those who do have the luxury of a studio um, or a space that they can go to and, you know, close the doors and, and you know, that becomes their little little world. Mm. Um, I think for some, for some creatives, things haven't really changed. But, um, but, yeah, what I've noticed is that, yeah, you really, I think, yeah, a lot of the excess stuff has been stripped and, and yeah, I, I, I've been enjoying that part of it, I think. I've noticed a lot of artists that I've been following or sort of watching in the last few months, I've noticed a lot of people's skills really, they're really honing in on their skills because they've got the time mm. and really putting that, yeah, that effort and time into their practice. And I've noticed a lot of art coming out especially in America, um, mm. due to the traumatic experience that they're going through at the moment. Um, and I think that's going to really shape our art community going forward as well, is, is not just creating art for art's sake, but I think even mm. artists are thinking more about the message that they want to send in their artwork and, and what they want to say and the value that they're putting into their artwork. Yeah, absolutely. I think going through, um, like, uh, I studied fine art in at university and I think somewhere along the way of graduating and then pursuing art full time some somewhere along the way art this idea of art therapy and art as therapy kind of fell to the wayside for me and every time I'd hear any kind of conversation to do with that to do with my personal art practice um, and the comments of, oh, it must be so nice just to paint all day and so therapeutic. I, I would kind of cringe a little bit and, and always have this like, ugh, like that just grates on me, like that, um, you know, it almost felt a bit soft and like that's not what I do. Like I, I you know, I'm a professional. Like yeah. my emotions aren't part of this. <laughs> <laughs> and I think during COVID that's actually something that I've really um, – really faced in my personal life and in my personal practice that's really shaped the kind of art that I'm now making right now and the paintings that I'm creating and the concepts that I'm forming in these artworks it's really um facing like it's okay (laughs) as a professional artist to create art 
as as therapy for myself. And I think just having that awareness and being okay with that, that's something that I'm really learning about a lot over over these last two months. And I think something like I, I went through a bit of a breakup just before COVID hit. And so that's another thing that's I'm I'm learning to heal through my art about and and so it's kind of this combination of um of pain and hurt and channeling that and hopefully coming out with a really hopeful message or or just a message of a shared experience <laughs> yeah because a lot of us are facing a lack of hope and a loss of hope right now and and an uncertainty in our futures and I think that's, yeah, that's definitely something that's felt on a global scale. Um, And so as much as it has been painful over these last few months in recovering and reshaping what my hope looks like, I think that's something that resonates with everyone right now, which is almost like the grace in this season. That's what it looks like. It's it's almost comforting. I mean, you wouldn't wish Mm. your own pain or or anything like Mm -hmm. that or any pain on anyone else. But the fact that we're all going through it globally is, is a huge comfort. Yeah, absolutely. And, it, you know, anyone who's gone through, uh, not to not to dwell on it too long, but like anyone who's gone through a breakup, it's like all of a sudden, all of the hope that you had for your future is just ripped from underneath you. Absolutely. And and to in order to stabilise yourself, it takes a long time. And something that I noticed as soon as COVID hit is that it's not just me, it's everyone, every single person right now. They don't know what the future looks like and, and it's so vague and we, we can't use that as our anchor. It's just being present every day, appreciating what we have every day and, and being grateful for what exists right now. And, yeah, that's definitely something that I, I've been learning a lot about. Mm. It's, you know, what you're saying about how you're learning that it's okay to really allow your art to be your therapy. That's mm. actually what your program taught me last year, the, the artist path. Because mm. um, about five years, six years ago, I went through a breakup as well and I moved, um, I moved right into the heart of Melbourne City. I was living in the suburbs at the time, moved into the city and it was, it was all the hope in my life, all my whole future had just been like, like a rug had just been pulled out from under me. And then I realised I hadn't been making art for years. I'd actually just completely stopped. And that I started making art again when I was on my own. I used to, instead of taking photos of things in the city or trying to record them in some way, I actually just had this little watercolour book and I would start painting instead of taking photos in my watercolour book and it forced me to slow down which was mm. important when you live in a city um but it actually this, that was kind of the beginning of my journey into my arts practice and then yeah, wow. but I was the same as you I was kind of like all right I have to be really I have to think really carefully about my art I have to be really good at planning what I'm going to make no emotion into it I want to produce something and I wanted it to look produced. And then it wasn't until your, um, the panel that, you know, we're having that chat with, it really just reinforced to me, it's okay to make your art practice whatever you want it to be. And I thought, mm. I actually realised that I needed my art practice to serve me. Mm. Just, and that if, if I was true to myself and I was making art that really just flowed straight under my art, then I think other people resonate with it more too. And I think Absolutely. a lot of artists are heading in this direction with what's happened with COVID. Yeah, totally. And I think it just puts a whole new um, level to like making art um, that you're really convicted about. You know, I think the most, um, the, the, the greatest artworks I know of were created from that place of utter conviction you know whether that was something trivial that the artist was really convicted about like Banksy's work which is not trivial but um political mm-hmm. and um yeah or, or something really beautiful and classical like a renaissance painting but you can see the conviction of the artist in them producing this work which is just so full of vigor and and passion and yeah that's what i crave as an artist to create work that 
um, that has something that, you know, pierces the heart of my audience or just one person even because, um, you know, not everyone's going to like my work. I don't presume that. But if I could impact just one person, that one person um, and speak, you know, into their story and be part of that, like that's, that's something that I would love for my own work. But I know that in me processing what I am right now through my art, someone else that's going to resonate with whether it's one person or 10 or hundreds you know and that's the power of art isn't it that's why we do mm. it because if we can create something that makes someone feel something mm. or think about something differently or it just alter them in some way i think that's magic that's amazing yeah. it's an amazing form of communication if we can do that with a painting um so yeah, I mean we've already touched on this, but in terms of the pandemic and everything that we've all been going through, what sort of insights do you think you've drawn from this time? And and what do you think um what's something positive that you might want to impress on people moving forward? Mm, I think um there's this like you've probably even heard me share this particular quote, but there's this quote that I love and I've constantly been revisiting um, throughout this whole, yeah, pandemic. And it talks about um, creativity um, and boundaries and how really the best works of art are created when there are boundaries set in place. And so I think whether someone's feeling um, really stunted in their art practice or whether they've actually really harnessed this time of isolation and are just loving life in the studio um there's still you know there's always going to be boundaries over us whether we're in a pandemic or not but harnessing those boundaries and realizing that you need sometimes you actually need those impressed upon you to create the best work of your life and mm -hmm. that could be a breakup or it could be um, being away from your family and being impacted emotionally by that like harnessing those boundaries to actually um, hone in creatively and let your creativity then um, you know untap and unleash potential that's inside of you I think that that's something that um, yeah, I, I have found really inspiring during this time. Um, and also balancing that with it's okay to not be doing like everything and all the things. And I think that there's that, yeah, there's, there's always going to be tension for us as creatives to be resting and, in, and appreciating the time that we need to just put down our tools and and just appreciate, you know, family or the situation that we're kind of stuck in mm -hmm. um, and not always being so, like, work, work, work orientated um, and busy. Like, life is always going to be full. I think I've just arrived at that. Like, it's always going to be full, but you decide what you put your attention towards. And if you need to rest, like, give yourself permission to rest during the time while you can <laughs> before things really ramp up again. Um, but if, you know, if you're wanting to, if you're able to produce right now, then, then go for it and, and utilise that time um, because the thing is we're not going to, hopefully, <laughs> we probably won't experience anything like this again. Um, and, uh, well, until we do, like you want to be able to maximise and utilise the time that we have. So whether that looks like resting or hustling, it's really based on individual circumstance but um that would probably be my 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 takeaway yeah mm. yeah that's awesome I, I think too um sort of trailing on from what you're saying too i think some of the best artwork that's created is a conclusion it's something mm. you come towards but uh, it might require days or weeks or maybe even years of walking through a particular field before someone yeah. goes that's what I want to capture. I see it. I feel it. This is what I need to, to make and reproduce. And, and sometimes that's something within ourselves or sometimes that's something within a lifestyle. And I think we need to actually buy up time. So 
<laughs> this is saying my husband hates me using, but cost versus worth. <laughs> Everything mm. costs something, but mm. what is it worth to you? You know, like like you say, we can be really busy and we might be, you know, busy with housework or we might be busy with people or admin or whatever it is. Um, but what is that worth to you? It's worth more than, than something else valuable that you could be doing or is resting going to be worth more in the long run to your arts yeah. practice? than actually working too hard. Um, I think that's something I learned last year as well. I worked a little too hard last year and sort of burnt out and was going nowhere and was like, yes, I need to change direction here. So I actually had a like a three month break and then when this this um this quarantine measures were put in place, it was actually halfway through that break. So for me it's kind of like extended that break and and at the beginning I was finding myself just dig in the same hole, just being really busy with other things. Um, and then this, this sort of break made me realise, hang on, I can't actually slow down and stop. It's going to cost something, but it costs something for everyone. Everyone's paying a price or either not going to work, not being able to have their kids going to school or something else they could be doing. There's a price. Yeah. But what's it worth to you? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Preach, right. girl. <laughs> It's, yep, that's great. <laughs> because I'm I'm the absolute worst person for being up till midnight busy with projects and stuff. But I think it's <laughs> important, you know, sometimes to just hang on. What's what's most important for me? Yeah. 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 Cool. Well that's thanks that's so cool. much. It was so lovely to chat to you. I yeah, absolutely yeah. love that painting in the background. I can't wait to see it finished. <laughs> oh, me too. It's it's brought, it's brought a lot of challenges, but a lot of like sweet moments as well. So yeah, it's kind of like as it as the painting's unfolding, so is my like the resolution in my heart. <laughs> so yeah, I feel like when it when it reaches that like nearing the end, I feel like almost it's like reflective of like my journey right now personally so yeah it'll probably be quite a um emotional emotional. it'll be quite a high when you're finished yeah I think so I'm 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 really looking forward to that (laughs) awesome well it was so lovely catching up with you and seeing you and having a chat so good thank you so much for your painting and hopefully we can get our workshops back up and running and back into the normal routines Yes, I'm so looking forward to that.